welcome back to this uh, course on product engineering and design thinking. It is today a lecture number 35, which is on frugal engineering, which is a disruptive innovation paradigm in product development. Actually here, the frugality means basically what we indicate is primarily is the affordability um, and uh, that happens due to uh, the reduction, drastic reduction in cost and uh, therefore uh, that creates a disruption in market and so it is uh, the cost disruption. So um, that is the kind of a paradigm that we will take up in our discourse which is a very important uh, issue today because the affordability is an extremely important issue not only um, for our country but for all countries and all emerging economy uh, all countries in the emerging economy um, and also uh, a section of people in the developed economy uh, where uh, affordability is a major issue with which are low income country or even middle income countries there this kind of a product which is not very expensive rather inexpensive products are uh, required and that would meet the need of a large number of people. So uh, we will go directly with this uh, basic premise into uh, today's discussion. Um, uh, so basically what we will do is that um, we will talk about uh, what are the disruption, how it happens and then we will talk about the uh, the uh, uh, frugal uh, engineering framework and also we would also see how this frugality which as I said is uh, uh, very pertinent for the uh, emerging economy countries which are uh, practically low income and um, constrained with affordability issues. But then uh, those products can as well be exported to the western countries, the developed countries, developed economy markets uh, where uh, to cater to a section of people there uh, whose income is also not high and that, that uh, kind of innovation would be called uh, reverse innovation particularly here I would like to make a point here that uh, innovation per se um, it is uh, as uh, the common belief or the notion goes is that it is a um, thing that happens in the developed world in the developed market a product is uh, developed created and then it is sent to uh, other countries uh, emerging economy countries uh, the innovation goes out. So basically it is kind of a trickle down effect, trickle down of innovation from the developed world to the emerging economy world. So um, or, or, or which we call global south that is coming to the global south. So that uh, so um, that is the uh, you know uh, uh, trickle down innovation is trickle down. What in reverse innovation uh, we are uh, saying is that certain innovation which is possible in uh, emerging economy and those can be exported to the, to the even developed countries and that is um, for a section of people which would be um, benefiting from this kind of product which has high affordability and this model therefore will be trickle up. Earlier it was a trickle down, now reverse innovation will be trickle up that it would be going from the emerging economy to the developed market. And well, then we would be talking about the, therefore how, how such design is possible in frugal design, um, there must be certain value propositions. We will discuss what are those value propositions involved in frugal design and then we would discuss what the tools available or and how what the tools we can use effectively in uh, frugal engineering but let me tell you that uh, there are many tools which normally are used for general product engineering and product development product design they can very well be used for uh, frugal engineering absolutely and there is um, no bar of using any tool but there are certain tools uh, specifically which are very very 
pathogens and which um, gives great advantage in terms of cost reduction particularly. We will talk about those. Uh, so, uh, first we will go to the uh, uh, disruption issue that uh, as we said that uh, that uh, there are two uh, kinds of uh, disruption, one is a low end disruption which is our current focus, one uh, when a venture enters at the low end of the market offering products with good enough quality, good enough means which satisfies the need, it may not be the best because best may um, need enough, uh, uh, you know, uh, cash outlet. For example, if I have to travel and stay in a hotel, I need not be in a seven-star hotel all the time. I may be uh, uh, stay in a place which is you know, economic. Uh, it may be a budget hotel. So, 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 so. Also, you have seen the airlines now. No trails. Uh, just just for uh, cost of flying, no food, nothing, uh, all have to be purchased. So, those are the models, the, those are frugal models. Now, um, this good enough quality, which we call uh, copacetic, this is actually our term uh, that we have used. In fact, we have made a publication with this term, uh, which is um, coming up in our uh, book being published by Springer. Um, so, uh, here um, the uh, quality at a low price and accepting low profit, but then that though it is a low profit per unit, but since this demand will be more because of it is um, affordable, then it will be made up from the volume. And uh, new market disruption is when ventures create a new segment in uh, existing market uh, that also um, is possible and then they grow into this. So, Mm, uh, one thing I would like to tell you, many people somehow uh, uh, talk about um, uh, frugal engineering, uh, I mean, uh, other, other terminologies are used also, frugal innovation, frugal design, those are fine. But some people um, say, a, 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 call it jugard innovation, which uh, we uh, actually uh, uh, do not think it's fitting because um, uh, it, it actually conveys the uh, um, message of poor connotation about quality and most importantly it is not sustainable. So, if something is not sustainable we will not discuss. So, jugard is not our scope and we will not discuss and if and when we are saying frugal we are not by any chance meaning it's jugard. Uh, I am clarifying at the, at the beginning because in literature we will see that plenty of references like this but for our requirement and purpose we simply will not touch it. The spacecraft which has gone to Mars, it cannot be sent with a Jugar method or mentality. It is actually frugally done with systematic engineering for cost reduction. All right. So then we move on to the uh, um, frugal engineering term. Actually, the term was coined by uh, Carlos Ghosn, who uh, got inspiration from the um, design of the car. Uh, Tata Nano and uh, he coined the term um, uh, that uh, frugal uh, engineering. Um, Andrea Bensick uh, uh, though uh, this Tata Nano perhaps uh, has not done very well but then the, uh, um, the idea is that philosophy that, that, that principle or precepts uh, are actually uh, have become a very important and those are being practiced by other auto manufacturers. And it has been reported by Andrea Bensick in one of his articles in 2016. And uh, so the Western R&D model is uh, being reviewed by and uh, this kind of um, approach is being uh, considered. Uh, here, let me tell you, when we are saying cost reduction, uh, it is just not simply uh, uh, doing something which should be done, but we are not doing it. It is, it is, it is not um, uh, arbitrary cost reduction. So it is. There is a purpose. Purpose is that that it is actually defeaturing or removing the non-vital features. Because in products, often we find that, uh, that uh, particularly in the Western world, when um, the new products are launched, they claim that okay, we are adding this feature, the cost is up, and all that. 
but then uh, that those becomes expensive models but then the new features are coming but many of the features are not used who uses a car here or in many parts of the world which uh, can run at 200 kilometers per hour but that is the design that has been made people are buying that car but not, no one is running if you think in our uh, most of the in most of the countries the uh, road condition is that it can be used no so defeaturing is important and by defeaturing by actually focusing on the core features which are essential features a vital feature if we focus on that and uh, only attend to that address them then the cost drastically goes down so that is the um, uh, objective but under no circumstances it means that though it is become, being made cheaper the quality is being compromised no rather it may be that since we are reducing the number of features complexity is being reduced and then its performance is going up so quality or reliability is going up that also is possible however i mean if uh, uh, for a say 50 percent reduction in cost if say five percent quality is or reliability is compromised maybe a group of people still would accept that um uh, so here uh, the idea is that increase in demand because of this affordability advantage would increase the uh, number and that will bring economy of scale and that is what is the you know uh, important by the way i would uh, tell you the carlos gone i say the carlos gone was uh, the chief executive officer of uh, um, renault nissan which is uh, the leading auto manufacturing company in the world so um, uh, what we need now you know when we are talking all these uh, we need to understand okay fine i mean we are talking about volume etc but how much is the volume where is the market now do we have that much of volume or do we have so much of demand that is the question so let us examine them now whether there is a demand or not but before we proceed to that so we are talking about when we are talking about demand we are talking about the market so here before moving on to the exact demand analysis or finally we would just uh, like to touch on this because as we know that design technology and of course the business and entrepreneurs we are talking about as i said how big is the market for frugal products so because the market is a component when these four intersect four uh, aspects intersect then the magic happens then the you know a, a, a real a real uh, uh, you know um, gain happens the best fit happens so uh, you can see the intersection um, uh, which is to be produced without uh, supererogatory or over engineered features and that is where the marvel occurs now so if that is the case we have to examine the market what is the market how big is the market as we have just now started discussing so we, so here we see that design technology market so we will have to touch uh, we said that we will talk about the frugal engineering the technology aspect the design frugal design aspect so we will discuss them now quickly i mean uh, now about the market as i said the market is that it, uh, the emerging economy um, uh, countries um totally if you put together with the world is having a customer base of say more than 5 billion imagine out of a current world population of 8 billion and this was this is based on a survey done few years back uh, by pwc uh, uh, in at that time when uh, the uh, population was about 8, 7 billion it was found that that uh, the middle uh, was uh, 4 billion and it just if we take one more billion in the lower end so 5 billion so it is a large volume of customer uh, so if we can do something here then there is no doubt of business in fact the western companies are actually trying to target this market and I, if i will give you quickly several examples where you will find particularly the the, the world-class companies the world leaders are actually uh, entering into this area of business this frugal um, uh, products and uh, to capture this market to capture this big market 
Now, um, uh, so um, here, so the affordability, as I said, is important, but also we would not lose sight on the quality because the quality is the ful fulcrum. Um, and uh, we have just touched upon the reverse innovation part. If we consider that, then the market can e be even more in size. All right, so quickly our uh, coverage on reverse innovation, as I have already said, uh, that reverse innovation happens when the from emerging economy it goes to developed market and this uh, frugal innovation goes into developed market and the, it, it is to uh, uh, understand that frugal innovation is rooted in two things one is the frugal engineering that methodology that we will be discussing and also the local need that indigenous need based ideation that how the we have written design thinking how the empathy for that need is uh, important how it is addressed so the indigenous need based ideation and frugal engineering these two create frugal innovation and there some of those uh, innovations goes into the reverse innovation maybe uh, maybe with some additional of uh, one or two more features may not be all uh, can be candidate for reverse innovation to suit the you know uh, uh, requirement of those advanced countries. And on the left side, you will find that micro level, macro level, etc., which means the national level or regional level economy is having individual capacity. So that happens in both this thing um, economies, both in emerging economies as well as developed market, which influences this uh, frugal engineering and needs, etc., which we can see here. Uh, we need not uh, read much into this because uh, we have already understood what reverse engineering, uh, reverse innovation is. That is what is the forte. So um, our focus is that we, if we can do a good frugal engineering job and develop a good frugal product, then there is a scope of reverse innovation that is export. Basically, that export brings foreign currency. That is important. That is and also. Uh, it would it would it would uh, make many um, import substitution if you very carefully look at it and that is what is today's India's need and the Atmanirbha Bharat that we are talking about actually will come from this effort. So uh, frugal innovation, frugal engineering, and through that, if we can uh, reach reverse innovation or all, it is route to Atmanirbha Bharat or self-reliant India. All right, so um, here very quickly we will see that uh, the frugal uh, design thinking uh, uh, has the features which are very uh, easily understandable. I will not go into the detail and um, uh, they are uh, affordable, which means uh, price point is low, cost of ownership is low. Uh, we will go into the detail of this sum manufacturable which is easy to manufacture and cost economically it can be manufactured user centric you remember that we did in design thinking which is user friendly uh, functional the functional means its performance should be good reliable and good quality uh, function uh, indigenously it, it should be sourced so if something is not imported or brought from elsewhere it will, can be locally made with local resources it is always cheaper so local and finally sustainable that it should be socially relevant it should be economical and it should be eco-friendly it is not that we are making something cheap therefore it would pollute the environment it would create more emissions or it would um, do certain you know effluent generation so that is not what is uh, intended so these are the aspects that we have to keep in mind in the frugal design approach uh, well, um, here um, it is nothing but a list of uh, certain examples. Uh, so here, I mean, what what basically in this slide I am going to tell you is that frugal design space is, uh, I mean, very wide. I mean, uh, starting from um, uh, 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 um, uh, pain to write with a pencil to write with to aeroplane or to sheep or to even spacecraft, all are coming under the purview of this frugal engineering. I'll tell you why. So here, that is the list, say from spacecraft to small refrigerator, 
um, so uh, from say um, car. Now uh, we are talking about car. Uh, nano principle is now used by Quid or uh, Logan to, uh, to 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 do cost reduction from the car to incubators for inside, from electrocardiogram to a scanner, ultrasonic scanner, for X-ray machine to prosthetic limb. All everywhere the frugal engineering principle, design principles can be used. Also in modern cases with uh, frugal uh, innovation is possible with uh, IoT or uh, artificial intelligence which saves cost and time. Well, uh, also there is a concept called bricolage which means uh, not to invent new things but there are many things which you can assemble and assimilate. It will give a very useful product. So you remember we were talking about uh, the design driven innovation. So, in the course of design driven innovation, this particular aspect will be highlighted, which talks about that how just not going chasing technology, how by doing design, good design, this uh, uh, good product can be realized. Uh, now, I, as I said, I am moving on to, but I will not spend any time on this because it is basically intended for you to look at later. Uh, to uh, look at the examples because there are many examples I have presented but in short of what I will tell you is all frugal because say for example instead of computer they are using for this electrocardiogram machine by General Electric uh, they are using printer which is used for bus ticket printing. I am giving one example. So they have been able to reduce the cost by uh, 10 times which original cost was $10,000 uh, is now as $1,000 and it is being used uh, in several uh, rural and semi-urban areas in India which was developed here. Um, I will just keep on uh, telling the examples, details you may uh, study but this is to give you the idea of what frugal engineering is example, that's all. I mean I cannot go into all the detail here, obviously you don't expect that and that is not the purpose of today's discussion, examples are many thousands. So I am giving you some of the examples like that here is a tractor which is a um, uh, very low cost tractor which uh, cost 2 lakh rupees which has been developed by CMRI, Central Mechanical Engineering Research Institute which is a CSIR um, uh, organization and, uh, and that is used for, uh, that is called Krishi Shakti and that is used for uh, the you know, uh, uh, agricultural purpose and uh, for farming as well as transporting etc. I am just giving you the examples, just see what is the um, uh, you know, um, scope and domain. See here are the uh, Siemens Multix earlier X-ray machine. What they have done is earlier uh, if you had noticed that the um, uh, X-ray rooms were having huge structure beams and all. So the cost of in, in infrastructure was really very high. Instead what they did was a you know, floor mounted device which reduced the cost to a great extent. And uh, the digital X-ray machine with high level clinical flexibility it is possible, excellent image quality and the cost is drastically reduced. It is actually one third the total cost if you look at. So imagine, I mean, I am giving you certain examples uh, of frugal engineered products. Uh, one is the fetal heart monitor which is also um, by uh, Siemens and by the way, I mean, uh, I would like to tell you that just for Siemens, uh, they assess their, uh, for their this frugal category product uh, as a market of 200 US billion US dollars. Um, I mean, uh, they call it smart, uh, smart in the sense that it is simple, maintenance friendly, affordable, reliable and timely to market. They call it smart. So look at the portfolio, how big the market is. So if anyone is trying to do it here, so that would certainly help them a lot and that uh, reduces the cost to half, 50% is the cost. So uh, it is a cost disruption uh, in the fetal heart monitor where they are using microphones, say for example, instead of ultrasound technology. So but just by using uh, the available technology which is much cheaper, much inexpensive, the uh, 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 cost has been reduced drastically. In uh, coming to the prosthetics, here you see that uh, perhaps you all have heard about 
Jaipur leg or Jaipur foot, uh, um, which which is uh, uh, to use prosthetics. On the left side, you see that young boy uh, is has lost his uh, leg and therefore uh, is using this prosthetic. And possibly you uh, may recognize the uh, lady who is in the middle, um, who is a very famous dancer, but she dances with a wooden leg. Shudha Chandra, if you uh, remember her, and uh, see the quality of the uh, prosthetic is so good that one can dance using that prosthetic limb. So uh, this is this is one great example. The credit goes to Dr. P. Shethi and uh, Master Damchandra Sharma, uh, who uh, actually uh, developed this, um, and that has changed. That has created a revolution um, in prosthetics. That's absolutely wonderful, fascinating. Um, uh, you, you study those details. Now, babies are uh, in particularly developed, uh, developing countries are uh, suffering from different many inadequacies that they don't have good incubators and all. So, uh, how, the, if there are not good incubators, how to how to how to um, make them uh, uh, work and how the babies would survive? Embrace had the name of the product that came up came out at uh, Stanford, which is an infant uh, uh, warmer, um, which uses a kind of a wax kind of a material, which is a uh, uh, basically it is a um, phase change material that we use, and when it melts, then it can um, you know, hold the temperature for pretty long time, maybe for eight hours or so. And the temperature can be reached at say 98 degree Fahrenheit. So in that the babies can survive. So these are low cost development, but that is immensely impactful. It it has huge impact. Uh, you can see. I mean, these are certain examples. This is another example of a Chinese X-ray uh, machine. What is the example? Is that See, in a good, I mean, a full-fledged X-ray machine will have the capability to do all kinds of X-rays. But they found that that majority of the uh, um, X-rays are chest X-rays. So at least for chest X-rays, they could uh, found, find out a uh, cheaper solution. How they had, um, uh, you know, um, uh, technology available with their parent company. Which is an aerospace uh, manufacturing company. They, 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 they were, that was underused, uh, was not much used. They took that and they used it for X-ray development, X-ray machine development purpose. So it is a digital direct X-ray uh, system on line scanning. Uh, so um, uh, they have developed this, but it can do only. Chest X-ray, but the cost you see that it it has become twenty thousand dollar, and the uh, Siemens and uh, the uh, the Philips and the General Electric um, cost used to be one fifty thousand dollar. So their focus was problem that uh, what is exactly the problem that is the chest X-ray is the mm, the maximal one solution of technology that they use the cheap available technology. They didn't go for a high and sophisticated technology. And the result is that they could capture 50% of the market in that domain and General Electric had to cut down its price to half and Philips simply left that competition. They, they could not survive. Um, Tata Nano, I don't want to go into further detail. Perhaps you all uh, know the story of Tata Nano being in India. But then uh, I, I have just jotted down uh, many things. Um, what um, the Tata Nano features are, where, say, for example, they have used one wiper instead of two, uh, the two cylinder petrol engine instead of four, um, uh, 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 say, uh, no power steering uh, or air conditioning, uh, uh, no anti lock brakes, uh, not airbags. So, by that, the uh, common people could afford. Now, that uh, the principle. I am again telling you, though Tata Nano has not prospered you know, for different reasons, but new variants are coming, but the philosophy is traveling worldwide. 
uh, I have already referred that uh, this is this has been said that the Quid and Lugan and many car companies are using that uh, concept and preset. Um, here, uh, uh, I would still I like to present one more example, which is the uh, Professor Amos Winter of MIT. He comes to India on a regular basis and uh, uh, the Global Engineering Research Lab here uh, is working on this, which is creating all terrain wheelchair for our Indian people. Um, so this is this is this is a, a very important problem that he is trying to solve because the rural uh, roads and um, are not very even and good. So uh, if it can travel in in all conditions, that would be very helpful for people. You can look at the picture how in rural India that is being uh, tried and run. So uh, this is and uh, just quickly two uh, more Indian example. One is Chutukul that a radiator which uh, doesn't require any compressor. It works with a fan. Fan that fan is used in a computer and uh, that that cools that uh, this uh, through evaporation and all. You see that lady is carrying that radiator on her head. So you can understand how small it, it is. Um, so that is one example. And uh, it, it serves a purpose. I mean, it is uh, here. It, it, it can um, keep uh, that thing for say maybe a couple of days, which is absolutely necessary for just saving fruit and other things. Otherwise, it would be food waste. Uh, Akas tablet. Many of you already know that it is a low cost uh, tablet that was created in India by a company called Data Wind and provided by government of India, which actually helps many students. Um, now coming to the value proposition, these are uh, the main or core things that we were discussing and as a designer this is a thing that one should focus on. It is that it should be value driven that is that is first is the, uh, the upfront pay, the price is low that uh, the first price also is low and then also the total cost of position also is low or the total cost of ownership also is called that is the price plus maintenance and repair plus uh, consumption if uh, whatever say it may be fuel it may be uh, electricity so all these to throw their life cycle that cost should be less and also it should be eco-friendly uh, because if it creates emissions so that also in, uh, involves certain cost of removing effluents and all um, optimized performance with robustness this is very important because in our kind of economy and country where uh, there are huge variation, power cuts are happening, voltage fluctuations are happening, temperature variation uh, from um, one place to another is extreme, um, dust etc is there. So it, in spite of all this, it should work. So that is one thing. Complexity reduction is important. Too much of complex, like say remote buttons, uh, so there are many buttons people uh, most of the time do not know which button works for what. So the simplicity uh, can be introduced it will be very useful so and that is called elegant simplicity it should aesthetically be good but it should be user friendly and elegant simplicity and finally as i said economies of scale because of the demand will go up uh, and from that the revenue and return and profit will come affordable excellence results from the unique value proposition i would uh, 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 skip this slide much because all those things I have already explained and it is written there in detail as I have already told you those things I have explained those are all written here like say fuel and maintenance and all those things are written. So you read that in your uh, uh, accordingly like say for example in your uh, fan or uh, uh, refrigerator that consumes electricity, car consumes fuel and so on and so forth. Um, so uh, we will go to uh, the uh, almost towards the end that says that what are the therefore tools we should use to do this. Uh, there are certain tools which are very useful um, out, out of many tools of product engineering. One is the value engineering, the first diagram mostly, which I have, we have already been discussed in module 2 in lecture number 10. If you look at the slide number 7 to 15, you will find the discussion on value engineering. So I am not repeating it here. Similarly, design for manufacturing or design for manufacturing and assembly, this was discussed in module 6 
lecture number 27, slide number 7 to 19. Uh, failure mode and effect analysis, FMEA, that was discussed in module 6, lecture 30, slide number 7 to 12. There are two other important uh, uh, tools which are called trees better, though briefly it was stuck in module 1, but uh, um, a quick familiarization is required. I will just do that shortly. And also another uh, tool called reverse engineering, not reverse innovation. Earlier I have spoken about reverse innovation, which is a different thing. Reverse engineering is another thing of which I will explain. Don't confuse between reverse innovation and reverse engineering. These are two different things. And quickly, so we will uh, nearly complete with these two tools. Um, this, but that would be just a glance. Right now, we because there are you can understand each tool, discussing each tool would take a huge long time and that may be a course. So, if needed, you can uh, learn that later. And, but here, the job is to, my job is to tell you. Uh, I thought that is important for you to know as a designer, as an engineer, if you want to use it, where to go, what kind of things you need and where it is available and how can it be used and what is the application. So with that idea, I am keeping the trees method. The first is you see that the, uh, the concept is that if you have a problem, there is a solution. In practically uh, a large number of cases, somewhere some, somebody has already solved it. May not be for exactly your problem, but for some other problem, but you can use that solution for your problem. That is a beautiful observation by Altsular. Uh, so, um, uh, here uh, the idea is that, so, so it is not, if you have a problem, here you see the first diagram you see inventive problem and solution. So, it is a trial and error. No, no trial and error. What rather can be done is to, to make it economic that that inventive problem can be converted to a trees problem that means to a general problem from a specific problem to a general problem and for a general problem there are too many problems general problem and there may be similar many problems and there are many solutions so one of those problems will have some kind of a solution and out of those solutions you can pick up your solution so what I am saying is, from a specific problem, you are going to a host of problems, which we are called general problem or a host of large number of problems and from similar problems, similar problems. So, and the, how the similar problems have been solved and one of those solutions may be useful for you. That is the methodology of trees, which has gained huge popularity. And uh, here, uh, I am not going into the details now, but there is a thing called uh, contradiction uh, that is very important to say contradiction means if I want to, uh, if I want to say for example, uh, increase strength of a material, of, of, of a um, uh, component, then its uh, 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 length or diameter is to increase. So, when I am trying to do some good here, some work is happening elsewhere, weight is increasing or volume is increasing or material consumption is increasing. So, there is a contradiction matrix which is on the uh, top right. I am um, just showing you the glimpse, that is why I have written at a glance. I am no, uh, I have, I am no way telling you that we are discussing in detail. I am just giving the impression what it works. Because whenever you need, you can now go back to find out where to use, how to use. Now, here there are uh, 39 engineering parameters. Now, the engineering parameters, if you Google, you will find there are 39 different engineering parameters and there are already established, uh, it is already established solution, 40 solutions available. And uh, so, here you see the idea is that in the contradiction matrix, you would find that inside boxes, there are certain numbers written. What those numbers are? Those are the solution numbers. So, the solutions are provided, 40 solutions are provided in a serial number 1 to 40. So, say if, if, if on the first row, if we see the third column 15, 8, 29, 34, it means weight of moving object. If we try to improve, what Watson says 
the length of moving object. So, so uh, if we try to reduce, something increases. So, uh, uh, so 15, 8, 29 and 34, that means these are the serial numbers of the solution which through which the problem can be solved. So, it is a systematic problem solving approach. At this stage, I will not go beyond this uh, because this contradiction on the left side, you would see that this is a technical contradiction and physical contradiction, say something, uh, something to be <coughs> to be to be increased to do that, but then uh, if it increases, then uh, it, it, it is actually to be uh, shortened. So, it is length is physically, uh, it is creating a contradiction. So, um, at this stage, I uh, think it is not to be explored any further unless you come across a problem. Otherwise, when, on trees, there are several discourses, maybe uh, there are many lectures uh, on discourses on trees itself. So, um, and also reverse engineering itself. So, I would rather touch upon this uh, concept and move on. So, reverse engineering is what? What is forward engineering? Forward engineering means that we create a concept as we were discussing. From that, we go to the, you know, prototype, development and then product. Reverse engineering says that no, uh, already a product is available. Say this, this mouse is available this mouse is available so i want to create a mouse so how do i create if i if i can reverse engineer this i can come to the diagram of this today i don't have the drawing of this i don't have the drawing of the mouse but this mouse uh, if i do a reverse engineering say using a laser scanning system and uh, if i can capture that cloud data and mm, through that uh, system that is uh, available here uh, so, if we can capture and put it and as a CAD drawing. So, from the product we go back to the drawing and the purpose is just not to do a copy. The purpose is if we do not, if we want to save time, quickly develop something, already if something is available in the market, competitors can do that. So, pick up something, look at what is the diagram and but then try to improve upon it. That is the most important thing which is called re-engineering. Re-engineering is very important that just not copying, copy it, go from the product to the drawing, then improve and that is exactly what is shown here on the diagram. On the left you would see the, uh, the, the physical model that the objective uh, object that I was showing as mouse, the physical object is digitized by the coordinate, coordinate measuring machine CMM which is uh, laser based or optical based. It can be tactile, it may be, uh, you know, uh, non-tactile, both types. It can touch and or say for a laser, it doesn't have to touch. And so, it goes into the data analysis and processing system. And here, I was talking about the design and modify. On that, you make the modification. That whatever the drawing finally comes out from the product. product from the product, we are going back to the drawing. It is just reverse. You see. From, normally we go from drawing to the product, but here we are going to the drawing from the product. And then after doing the re-engineering, modification, improvement and all, we again send back to the system for manufacturing. That improved version, which is the NC machine or CNC machine as you know, and then the prototype is created. So it is just the reverse and it is a one good way and all the countries uh, who have progressed a lot in developing products, be it Japan, be it China, you perhaps know that they did huge reverse engineering in their, you know, industries and many products they brought out. So, um, uh, I would conclude today's discussion practically saying that um, this, you see that it is um, the um, Mars orbiting mission isro's frugal mom it is called frugal mom mass orbiting mission which cost one tenth of the cost of maven created by nasa and uh, uh, what they did is that instead of directly a slingshot from earth to mars they actually mm, used to uh, that uh, technology of you know moving it around the earth for about a month and then went there 
so that you know, fuel uh, consumption was less. That was the technology. I am not going into the detail of the technology, but I am saying the concept. And uh, very interestingly, that it was supposed to be there only for six months, but trust me, the quality is so good. I mean, quality also has to be good. As I am speaking now, as we are discussing, it is still up there or biting around Mars. The quality is so good. And the report tells us that it will be there for some more time. It is very fascinating. So it is a frugal engineered product. Frug Mangalayan it is called. Uh, so I would conclude saying that so we understand uh, that this is a very important thing for emerging economy market. This discourse deals with innovation and cost disruption, create affordable products based on precepts on frugal engineering and innovation. It discusses the interaction of design, technology, business, market for ideal fit. The aspects of frugal engineering based reverse innovation is also delineated here. The discussion moves to the frugal design aspects for evening value proposition we have discussed. A number of examples have been presented for a comprehensive understanding and the uh, we are uh, closing uh, close the discussion with the pertinent tools um, and this is the reference so i'm sure that uh, that you, you you have been inspired and motivated with this kind of uh, work that our countrymen require and also a, a huge population in the world requires more than 5 billion and i'm sure that you would be uh, uh, interested to work for them and this discourse certainly would help you. Uh, with that hope, I uh, um, would uh, hope that I would uh, expect that some of you at least will try a few things to develop a model or a product. Thank you very much for your patient hearing and uh, uh, I am sure that uh, you will do good with this. Thank you very much.